Hello, I welcome you all in this video of multiple choice questions. The topic that we are going to discuss today is Bernoulli's equation and the continuity equation. So let us start with the question 1. Which factor primarily determines whether a fluid will sink or float in another fluid? The options given are A. Viscosity B. Density C. Surface tension D. Temperature Points to consider here are Density dictates if a fluid floats or sinks. Imagine two fluids in equal volume. If one packs more mass, higher density, it displaces less surrounding fluid resulting in a weaker buoyant force and ultimately sinking. Conversely, low density fluids like oil float gracefully thanks to a stronger opposing force from the displaced fluid. Viscosity, surface tension and temperature play minor roles compared to this density dance. Therefore, the correct answer of this question is option B density. The next question is, what is the relationship between pressure and velocity in a fluid flow according to Bernoulli's principle? The options given are, option A, pressure increases as velocity increases, B, pressure decreases as velocity increases, C, pressure remains constant regardless of velocity and option D, pressure and velocity are independent. Please recall that pressure and velocity in a fluid flow have an inverse relationship according to Bernoulli's principle. Imagine a stream narrowing, the water speeds up that is higher velocity. To maintain the total energy as velocity increases, pressure must decrease to make up for the difference. It's like trading pressure for speed. Conversely, wider sections means slower water and higher pressure. This principle explains everything from airplane wings generating a lift to water flowing faster through narrow pipes. Therefore, the correct answer of this question is option B, pressure decreases as velocity increases. Next question is, which type of flow is characterized by smooth parallel layers of fluid? The options given are option A, turbulent flow. B. Laminar flow C. Transitional flow D. Irrotational flow Facts which will take us to the correct answer are Imagine dropping ink into a moving fluid. In case of a turbulent flow, the ink would swirl and disappear rapidly, creating chaotic mixing in all directions. In case of a laminar flow, the ink would spread out in thin distinct layers along the flow like parallel ribbons with minimal mixing between them. Transitional flow is an intermediate state between laminar and turbulent, showing some initial signs of mixing alongside laminar characteristics. It's difficult to differentiate visually without prior knowledge. And irrotational flow refers to a specific condition where fluid particles have no angular momentum, not directly related to the presence of layers. This leads to the correct answer as option B that is a laminar flow. Next question is what does the Reynolds number indicate in fluid flow? Options given are viscosity effects, B pressure differences, C turbulent flow tendencies and option D kinematic viscosity. What we must know to answer this question correctly is Reynolds number acts like a turbulence fortune teller. It predicts the odds of chaos by comparing go with the flow forces that is inertia to slow down forces viscosity. Higher values of Reynolds number gives us a buckle up for turbulent swirls and low number of Reynolds number is enjoy the smooth layer dried. When the value of Reynolds number is 2000 that's a turbulent flow below 2000 Imagine graceful layers gliding past each other, that's a laminar flow. And therefore, the correct answer of the question is Reynolds number in a fluid flow indicate turbulent flow tendencies. In the next question, we are assuming an incompressible flow in which a horizontal pipe with steady flow 
how does the velocity change if the pipe diameter decreases the options given are a velocity increases option b velocity decreases option c velocity remains constant option d velocity becomes zero points to consider here are imagine water flowing through a garden pipe when you squeeze the pipe diameter decreases the same amount of water must pass through the narrower opening in the same amount of time steady flow to maintain the same flow rate volume per unit time the water speeds up to compensate for the reduced space or another example think of cars squeezing through a narrow lane they have to go faster to keep traffic flowing this principle applies to all incompressible fluids in pipes as the diameter goes down the velocity goes up to maintain the constant flow rate and therefore the correct answer to this question is velocity increases if the pipe diameter decreases next question is what does the continuity equation describe in fluid mechanics the given options are option a conservation of mass option b conservation of energy option c conservation of momentum option d conservation of volume what we must know to answer this question correctly is the continuity equation states that the amount of fluid entering a section of the pipe must equal the amount leaving the section in the same time interval mass can't magically appear or disappear even while flowing this principle applies regardless of the pipe's shape or the fluid's velocity it essentially ensures that what goes in must come out when it comes to the fluid mass while other options conservation of energy momentum and volume are important in fluid mechanics they describe different physical properties not specifically mass flow and therefore the correct answer of this question is the continuity equation describe the conservation of mass in fluid mechanics next question is which factor does the continuity equation primarily rely on to ensure conservation of mass in fluid flow the given options are option a pressure gradient b density gradient c velocity gradient and option d temperature gradient what we must know to answer this question correctly is the continuity equation tracks how the rate of change in velocity that is the gradient across the different sections influences the mass flow if the pipe narrows velocity increases the gradient is positive requiring more mass to enter to maintain the flow rate conversely a widening pipe velocity decreases has a negative gradient necessitating less mass inflow by considering these velocity changes the equation ensures that in any given section the mass entering matches the mass leaving upholding the principle of mass conservation while other factors like pressure and density affect flow the continuity equation directly depends on the velocity gradient to control the mass balance and therefore yes you have correctly identified the option c as the correct answer that is velocity gradient the next question is which statement best describe the continuity equation for a steady incompressible flow the options given are option a mass flow rate is directly proportional to velocity and inversely proportional to density b mass flow rate is directly proportional to density and inversely proportional to velocity option c mass flow rate is directly proportional to both velocity and density and option d mass flow rate is independent of velocity and density please recall the continuity equation ensures that the mass of water entering a section of the river must equal the mass leaving the section in the same time interval mass flow rate is the amount of mass passing through a specific point per unit time if the water velocity increases the mass flow rate increases proportionally to get the same amount of water through the same time similarly if water density increases the mass flow rate increases proportionally to maintain the same mass flow despite less volume therefore for steady incompressible flow the mass flow rate is like a product higher velocity and higher density both lead to a higher mass flow rate and therefore the correct answer to this question is 
mass flow rate is directly proportional to both velocity and density. Next question is, which of the following equations correctly represent Bernoulli's equation for inviscid incompressible steady flow? The four equations given are P plus 1 by 2 rho into V square plus rho GH is equals to constant. Option B, P plus 1 by 2 rho into KV square plus rho GH is equal to constant where KV is kinematic viscosity. Option C, P by rho plus V square plus rho is equals to constant. And option D, P into rho plus 1 by 2 V square plus G into H square is constant. Please recall, pressure is expressed into the dimensions of M, L to the power minus 1, T to the power minus 2. Rho represents density, M, L to the power minus 3. V represents velocity, L, T to the power minus 1. G represents acceleration due to gravity, L, T to the power minus 2. And H represents height, L. Option A balances the dimensions of each term, M, L to the power minus 2, T to the power minus 2 and represents the conservation of mechanical energy for inviscid incompressible steady flow. In option B, inclusion of kinematic viscosity L to the power 2 T to the power minus 1 makes the equation dimensionally inconsistent. In option C, dividing pressure by density doesn't have a meaningful physical interpretation. In option D, squaring the height introduces an incorrect power dependency and therefore the correct answer is option A, P plus 1 by 2 rho into V square plus rho GH is constant. Next question is, in fluid mechanics, which of the following equations correctly represent the continuity equation for a steady incompressible flow? The given options are option A, do rho by do T plus del of rho u is equals to 0 where do rho by do t is the rate of change of density over time, del is gradient operator and u is the velocity vector. Option b rho in bracket do u by do t plus del u is equals to 0. Option c divergence of rho u is equals to 0 and option d do u by do t plus g is equals to 0 where G is the acceleration due to gravity. What we must know to answer this question correctly is the continuity equation expresses the principle of mass conservation stating that the net rate of mass entering a controlled volume must equal the net rate of mass leaving it. Option A is the full continuity equation applicable to both steady and unsteady as well as compressible and incompressible flow. Option B multiplies density by the total derivative of velocity which doesn't represent net mass flow. Equation given in option D describes acceleration rather than mass conservation and therefore the correct answer of this question that out of the following which equation correctly represents the continuity equation for steady incompressible flow is option C that is divergence of rho u is equals to zero. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this will help you preparing the examination in a better way.